Sumerian tablets are probably one of the oldest uh, form of a written record that we have. The Sumerian language has no known relatives. Then what is its purpose? Why did they even make it? History today is at exciting moments with our current range of technologies, allowing us to discover things we may not have ever found leading to new ideas about our ancient past. One of these discoveries was a story, an ancient king named Gilgamesh. The story of Gilgamesh is truly a marvel of ancient literature. You see, this story, inscribed in cuneiform on clay tablets, is not just old, it's ancient, dating back to around 2100 BCE during the third dynasty of Ur, but what's fascinating is that the tale of Gilgamesh goes even further back with earlier Sumerian poems. Imagine this. These tablets, lost for millennia, were found in the ruins of Nineveh's library in the 19th century. Piecing them together was like solving a grand historical puzzle, but some pieces are still missing, lost to the sands of time. Gilgamesh himself, what a character. He's described as two-thirds god and one-third human, which explains his incredible strength and courage. This isn't your average hero. He's on a whole different level, surpassing ordinary men and even the heroes of other ancient myths. It's like he's in a league of his own, a blend of the divine and mortal, making him nearly invincible. Now let's talk about his adventures because they're nothing short of epic. Gilgamesh wasn't content just sitting around. He was driven by a thirst for glory and fame. Take, for example, his journey to the cedar forest. He goes there to fight Humbaba, a fearsome guardian, proving his heroism and strength. But the real twist comes after his friend Enkidu's death. This loss hits Gilgamesh hard, and he becomes obsessed with finding immortality. It's a quest that teaches him a hard truth, that death is inevitable and even he can't escape it. Speaking of Enkidu, their friendship is a story for the ages. Enkidu starts as a wild man, created by the gods to challenge Gilgamesh, but instead of rivals, they become the best of friends. Their bond is deep, showing how even the mightiest hero can find solace and transformation in companionship. When Enkidu dies, Gilgamesh's grief is profound, setting him on a path of self-discovery and a quest for immortality. It's a poignant reminder of how friendships can change us and make us better. The themes in this story are universal and timeless. Getting into the intriguing world of King Gilgamesh's historical existence, which, let me tell you, is a fascinating blend of archaeology and ancient storytelling. You see, our main piece of evidence comes from something called the Sumerian King List. This isn't just any old list. It's an ancient manuscript where the Sumerians chronicled their kings and the lengths of their reigns. It's like their version of a royal hall of fame, mixing in both legendary and historical figures, which shows how they saw their own past. Now here's where it gets interesting. Gilgamesh pops up on this list. Yes, the same Gilgamesh from those epic tales. His name being there is a big deal because it suggests that he wasn't just a mythical figure, but also a real king who ruled over Sumer. The list has been found in several versions, scattered across different ancient sites. It's like finding multiple editions of a bestseller, showing that this list was pretty important back in the day. But wait, there's more. We've also got various inscriptions and artifacts that mention Gilgamesh. Think of these like ancient shout-outs carved on tablets, cylinder seals, and even walls. These bits and pieces have been dug up from all over Mesopotamia, especially around Uruk, where Gilgamesh was said to rule. The catch? These references are kind of like brief celebrity mentions, not giving us the juicy details of his reign or achievements. Now the tricky part in all of this is trying to separate the man from the myth. It's like trying to figure out where the legend ends and the real king begins, which isn't easy because there aren't any tell-all autobiographies or detailed historical records about his rule. This scarcity of info means we're dealing with a puzzle that's missing quite a few pieces. But here's why all of this is super important. Even though the evidence is a bit sparse, it's vital in showing that Gilgamesh was more than just a character in ancient tales. He was a real figure in Mesopotamian history. Let's talk about the Anunnaki, these absolutely fascinating figures from ancient Mesopotamian mythology. You see, the Anunnaki are like the A-listers of the godly world in both Sumerian and Akkadian myths, which, by the way, are some of the oldest in the world. The Sumerians kind of set the stage with their ideas of these gods, and then the Akkadians came along and said, hey, we like these guys, and adopted them into their own pantheon. Now, in the Sumerian version, the Anunnaki are mostly hanging out in the underworld doing their godly things there. But as we move into Akkadian and later Babylonian myths, 
these gods get a major role upgrade. They're not just underworld big shots anymore. They're taking on some serious cosmic duties like controlling human destinies and playing a part in the creation of the world. It's like they went from being local celebrities to cosmic influencers. Speaking of their cosmic roles, let's talk about how they show up in myths and epics. In the epic of Gilgamesh, which is like the ancient blockbuster of its time, the Anunnaki are part of this divine council, making big decisions that affect Gilgamesh's epic adventures. Then there's the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation story, where the Anunnaki are right there in the mix, helping to set up the universe and lay down the laws of the land. But it's not just about creating worlds and starring in epics. The Anunnaki were believed to be actively involved in human affairs. We're talking about deciding the fates of kingdoms and people, bestowing kingship, fertility, and sometimes even throwing curses around. They were like the puppet masters of human history, pulling the strings in battles and empires. And with this power, they brought a sense of divine justice and morality to the table, reflecting the ancient Mesopotamians' ideas about the gods and their relationship with humans. Now here's where things get really cosmic. Over time, some of these Anunnaki start getting associated with celestial bodies like the Sun, Moon and Venus. This wasn't just a simple rebranding. It was a big shift from being underworld figures to becoming celestial heavyweights. This move up to the cosmos meant they were now involved in the movement of the stars and planets, which was a big deal in Mesopotamian astrology and cosmology. It's like they went from being local deities to universal forces. All right, let me take you on a journey through Gilgamesh's epic adventures and his encounters with the Anunnaki gods because, let me tell you, it's like a blockbuster movie from the ancient world. First off, we've got this incredible meeting with Utnapishtim, who's pretty much the Mesopotamian version of Noah. He tells Gilgamesh about this massive flood that the gods sent to wipe out humanity. But here's the kicker. He survived because one of the gods, Ea, tipped him off to build a boat. And for saving all these lives, the gods gave him immortality. This story blows Gilgamesh's mind and he starts thinking, hey, maybe I can live forever too. But Gilgamesh's journey isn't just about one guy. He's got a buddy, Enkidu, who was literally made by a goddess because the gods were worried about Gilgamesh getting too powerful. Talk about divine intervention. Then there's this run-in with Ishtar, the goddess of love and war. She's got a thing for Gilgamesh, but he's like, no thanks. And she gets so mad that she sends this massive bull of heaven after him. And we can't forget about Humbaba, this monstrous guardian of the cedar forest. Gilgamesh and Enkidu decide they're going to take this creature down, which is a huge deal because it's like challenging the will of the gods themselves. It's a real test of their strength and bravery. Throughout all this, Gilgamesh is chatting with the gods, especially Shamash, the sun god. Shamash is like his divine advisor, giving him tips and helping him out. And then there's Ninsen, Gilgamesh's mom, who's a goddess herself. She's giving him all this motherly advice and support, showing that even in the world of gods and epic heroes, a little parental guidance goes a long way. So what we've got here is a story that's not just about a hero's quest for glory and immortality. It's a deep dive into the relationships between gods and humans in ancient Mesopotamia. These deities are involved in everything, from creating companions to guiding heroes and even getting a little revenge when things don't go their way. Getting back to ancient kings, let's talk about Gilgamesh and his reign in Uruk, which is absolutely mind-blowing when you think about it. Picture this. We're going back to around 2700 BCE, smack in the heart of what's known as the early dynastic period in Sumerian history. This was a time when city-states in Mesopotamia were popping up like mushrooms, and these were not just any cities. They were the first complex societies in human history, a real game-changer in how people organized themselves. Now Gilgamesh, this legendary king, was ruling over Uruk, one of these city-states. Uruk was not just any city, it was a major player, Located in what's now modern-day Iraq, right along the Euphrates River, it had everything going for it, fertile land, a prime spot for trade, you name it. It was like the New York City of its time. The city was a cultural and economic powerhouse, known for its architectural wonders. We're talking massive temple complexes and the famous Uruk Wall, which people say Gilgamesh himself built. Imagine the sheer scale of that. But Uruk wasn't just about impressive buildings, it was also a religious hub. The main temple of Inanna, or Ishtar as she was later known, was there. She was a top-tier deity in the Sumerian pantheon, and having her main temple in Uruk was a big deal. 
It shows how intertwined religion and politics were back then. And get this, Uruk was likely one of the biggest cities in the world at the time. The population was booming, which just goes to show how important this place was. Now let's talk about Gilgamesh's role in all of this. As the king, he was the man in charge, the big cheese. He'd be making all the major decisions about running the city, managing its religious life and dealing with other city-states. And let's not forget military campaigns and construction projects. Gilgamesh was likely leading his troops in battles and spearheading building projects that made Uruk the wonder that it was. Have you ever looked up at the stars and wondered if we are truly alone in the universe? It's a profound question that stirs the imagination and makes us question what we know about our own history. Today, we're diving deep into ancient Mesopotamia to explore the intriguing theory of the Anunnaki. Found in Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki were described as celestial beings that descended from the heavens. But could they have been more than just myth? And what if I told you this ancient tale has echoes in other cultures around the world, posing the possibility of a common narrative of extraterrestrial contact? In the heartland of Mesopotamia, one of the cradles of human civilization, the Sumerians etched a compelling narrative into clay tablets. They spoke of beings known as the Anunnaki, divine entities who descended from the heavens. These celestial figures were not mere flights of fantasy but were perceived as genuine influences in the Sumerian society. In the Sumerian cosmology, the Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of An, the sky god, and Ki, the earth goddess. And among these divine figures, some, like Enki, Enlil, and Inanna, held significant roles in Sumerian myths and epics. They were seen as divine mediators, connecting the celestial realm with the earthly domain and playing a part in the creation and early development of humanity. The Sumerian texts describe Eridu as the first city established by the Anunnaki on Earth. Interestingly, Eridu is considered one of the oldest cities in the world, and it's in this ancient city that the concept of urbanization, written language and state rule first began to emerge. The Anunnaki were often associated with bestowing wisdom and knowledge upon humanity. They're said to have taught humans the arts of civilization, like law, agriculture, architecture and writing, catalyzing the societal shift from hunter-gatherers to settled agricultural communities. Now the crux of the issue remains. Are these accounts of the Anunnaki mythological constructs created to provide explanations for natural phenomena or historical events? Or could they be interpreted as early human interactions with beings from another world, documented through the only means available at that time, myths and legends? The ripples of the Anunnaki influence, it seems, extend well beyond the boundaries of Sumer. Whether it's under different names, titles or representations, ancient cultures around the globe have distinct tales of divine beings descending from the skies to interact with humanity. Let's turn our gaze across various cultures and decipher these intriguing narratives. In ancient Egypt, for instance, the pantheon of gods was believed to have descended from the heavens to guide human society. Their god of wisdom, Thoth, similar to the Anunnaki, was said to have introduced writing, mathematics and architecture to humanity. Intriguingly, the Sumerians' neighbor, the Akkadians, had their equivalent of the Anunnaki called the Igorge. Even halfway across the world in Mesoamerica, the Maya believed in the Kukulkan or Feathered Serpent, a deity that bestowed knowledge and wisdom. He was known as Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs. Meanwhile, the ancient Indian texts, the Vedas, tell of the divas, divine beings who interacted with humans and even interbred with them, a narrative strikingly similar to the Anunnaki's role in Sumerian texts. In Greek mythology, the gods resided atop Mount Olympus but frequently descended to Earth to interact and sometimes mate with humans, leading to the birth of demigods and heroes. Again, this resonates with the Sumerian account of the Anunnaki breeding with humans to create demigods. These parallels in disparate cultures across various geographical boundaries pose a bewildering question. Are these uncanny resemblances mere coincidences? sprung from the shared human impulse to personify and deify natural phenomena and existential quandaries? Or do they point towards a common thread, an ancient global influence by sky beings weaving through the tapestry of human civilization? As we dig deeper, we tread along the precipice of the known and the unknown, venturing into realms that blur the boundaries between mythology, archaeology and even, perhaps, extraterrestrial encounters. 
This tantalizing and universally resounding theme of celestial beings lending a hand in the development of human civilization is truly compelling. From the celestial dragons of Chinese lore, the Norse gods of Asgard, to the divine pantheon of the Roman Empire, stories of mighty beings from the stars are deeply entrenched in our collective consciousness. So why is it that across wide oceans, over towering mountains, through vast deserts and deep in lush rainforests, the tale of star beings visiting Earth, helping humans or sometimes wreaking havoc, finds its way into the oral and written traditions of civilizations? One explanation proposes that these myths are archetypal, that is, they represent universal symbols or motifs embedded deep within our collective unconscious, as Carl Jung might argue. They are part of our human heritage, a product of the shared fears, desires, and the innate curiosity about our place in the universe that is common to all human societies. Another explanation draws on the theories of Swiss author Erich von Däniken, who argues that these stories are not merely symbolic but literal descriptions of encounters with extraterrestrial beings. He contends that these celestial beings were, in fact, technologically advanced aliens who were mistaken for gods by our less advanced ancestors. Moreover, this global myth of celestial beings suggests a diffusion of cultural elements between ancient societies. This could mean that either these stories were so universally relevant that they spontaneously arose in each culture, or that ancient civilizations were much more globally connected than we give them credit for, sharing stories and myths across vast distances. Yet another perspective comes from the field of astroarchaeology, which suggests that these stories might represent early humans' attempts to understand and document astronomical phenomena. The celestial beings may be personifications of planets, stars, and celestial events like comets or meteor showers. However, the line of thought that we're most interested in aligns with the Sumerian text's narrative, that these beings were advanced entities who directly intervened in human society, teaching us agriculture, architecture, writing, and social organization. As we delve further into this topic, we'll encounter theories both intriguing and controversial. Each viewpoint offers a different lens to view these ancient narratives that have shaped our world and continue to puzzle and fascinate us to this day. The question is, which lens brings the truth into the sharpest focus? And are we prepared for what we might see? With such fascinating theories and tantalizing connections, one might be tempted to jump headfirst into believing these stories. However, as any good investigation goes, we need to approach this from a scientific perspective, scrutinizing the evidence, evaluating its validity, and understanding its context. Firstly, let's consider the Sumerian texts themselves. The clay tablets on which these stories were written were inscribed with cuneiform script, one of the earliest known forms of writing. Translating these is a complex task, often open to interpretation, so it's entirely possible that descriptions of the Anunnaki and their actions may not be entirely accurate. For instance, Zechariah Sitchin, a popular author known for his translations of these texts, proposed that the Anunnaki were extraterrestrials who came from a planet called Nibiru. Other scholars, however, have contested his interpretations, suggesting he read too literally into metaphors and symbolism in the text. In the realm of archaeology, physical evidence can also be ambiguous. While we find inexplicable feats of engineering in ancient structures and iconography that seems to depict otherworldly beings, these can also be explained by human innovation and the power of human imagination. Some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory point to technological achievements of ancient civilizations as evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. They argue that the construction of the pyramids of Giza or the Nazca lines in Peru would have required knowledge and technology beyond the capabilities of the people of the time. However, many archaeologists dispute this view, asserting that these feats are testament to human ingenuity rather than alien assistance. Turning to the global similarities in myths, these can be explained by the shared human experiences and archetypal narratives. While it's intriguing to think that similar stories of celestial beings across cultures point to a common historical event, it's also possible that these myths arose from shared human fears, desires, and attempts to understand the natural world. If we pause for a moment and put the skepticism aside, what could this Anunnaki influence really mean? Starting with the texts, the Sumerians described the Anunnaki as deities who descended from the heavens. They were seen as bringers of civilization, teaching humanity various aspects of culture like law, agriculture, architecture, and even the mysterious art of divination. 
If we consider this from an ancient astronaut perspective, this could be interpreted as these beings sharing advanced knowledge and technologies. This perspective gains even more weight when we consider how quickly civilization seemed to have sprung up in Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization. The region saw an almost abrupt transformation from a hunter-gatherer society to one that built cities, developed agriculture and invented writing. Could this sudden leap have been aided by extraterrestrial influence? Moving to the global scale, if the Anunnaki did influence other cultures, we might need to rethink the concept of independent innovation. Currently, historians believe that many cultures developed similar technologies and beliefs independently, a phenomenon called parallel evolution. But if the Anunnaki theory holds true, it suggests a more interconnected ancient world than we currently believe. To take an example, let's consider the pyramids. Pyramidal structures appear not only in Egypt, but also in cultures as far removed as the Mayans in Central America. If we were guided by extraterrestrials in our distant past, it certainly poses intriguing questions about our origins and our place in the universe. Are we truly alone, or have we been part of a galactic community since the dawn of civilization? And as always, thanks for watching. We have taken a journey through ancient texts, explored cultures from around the globe, and tried to decode the influence of the Anunnaki. While the theory of extraterrestrial intervention in our past remains a topic of speculation and debate, it prompts us to keep an open mind, to question the accepted narratives, and to continue our quest for knowledge. As we ponder the mysteries of our past, we may just find clues that could reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. But as we continue our search for answers, remember, it's not just about reaching the destination, but also about the thrill of the journey itself. The idea that the Anunnaki might have had a global influence isn't a novel concept, but exploring its potential breadth and depth is an enthralling journey. As we traverse ancient civilizations and their achievements, it's hard to ignore certain patterns and parallels that seemingly hint at a unifying factor. Could it be that this ancient extraterrestrial race, known in Mesopotamian myths as powerful deities, shared their knowledge across vast stretches of land and time? When we observe ancient structures from the ziggurats of Mesopotamia to the pyramids of Egypt and even the distant steppe temples of the Mayans, a structural similarity emerges. These colossal structures, often aligned with celestial bodies and events, demand a level of architectural and astronomical expertise that seems ahead of its time. The question then arises, is it mere coincidence or a shared blueprint from a singular advanced source? This theme of advanced knowledge isn't confined to architecture. Ancient cultures from the Sumerians to the Vedic Indians possess scriptures detailing complex astronomical data. They charted the movement of stars, understood the concept of planets and even hinted at a heliocentric system. Were these independent discoveries? Or was there a teacher, perhaps the Anunnaki, guiding them to these revelations? Mythologies further fuel this speculation. Various cultures describe divine or otherworldly beings who descended from the skies. In South America, the legends talk of gods arriving from the stars and teaching them advanced agricultural methods. Similarly, in Africa, the Dogon tribe's knowledge of the Sirius star system, particularly of the dwarf star invisible to the naked eye, baffles scientists today. Were these mere tales or encoded accounts of actual encounters with beings from beyond our world? Artifacts and symbols also suggest a global link. The ubiquitous dragon, revered from China to Europe while diverse in interpretation, holds common themes of power, divinity, and often association with the sky or cosmos. Were these depictions inspired by the Anunnaki or their technologies, interpreted by our ancestors as magical or divine? While these patterns and similarities across ancient cultures are striking, they also open a Pandora's box of questions. Were our ancestors merely drawing from a shared well of human imagination, coming up with parallel innovations and myths? Or do these patterns suggest that an external, perhaps extraterrestrial influence, specifically the Anunnaki, bridged these cultures and eras, sowing seeds of knowledge that blossomed into the marvels we study and admire today? The Indus Valley, nestled between modern-day Pakistan and India, was home to one of the most enigmatic ancient civilizations. Flourishing around 3300 BCE, the Indus Valley Civilization, or Harappan Civilization, named after Harappa, one of its primary cities, 
showcased a level of urban sophistication and organization that rivals its contemporaries in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Astonishingly, within the ruins of the Indus Valley, archaeologists have unearthed symbols and artifacts that bear uncanny resemblances to the Anunnaki iconography of ancient Sumer. While it's crucial to approach such comparisons with caution, the potential implications of these findings are hard to ignore. City layouts of the major Indus centers, such as Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, display meticulous planning. Wide, straight streets form a grid pattern, with advanced sewage and drainage systems unseen in other parts of the ancient world. At the heart of Mohenjo-Daro stands the Great Bath, a central public structure possibly used for ceremonial purposes. Surrounding it are symbols etched into stone and metal, symbols resembling the winged sun disk, a staple of Anunnaki representation. Moreover, countless small soapstone seals have been found throughout the Indus Valley sites. These seals, mostly square or rectangular, depict various animals, figures and symbols. Among these symbols, certain motifs echo the iconography associated with the Anunnaki, most notably figures standing or seated in postures reminiscent of deities found in Sumerian depictions. While the written script of the Indus Valley remains undeciphered, these symbols offer tantalizing hints Many researchers have posited a potential cultural or spiritual link between the Harappans and the Sumerians. It's conceivable that they might have shared, borrowed or even inherited certain aspects of spirituality and mythology, possibly centered around the mysterious Anunnaki. One of the most striking pieces of evidence is a depiction found on a seal where a figure, seated in a yogic posture and surrounded by animals, bears a headpiece strikingly similar to those worn by Sumerian deities. This figure, often called the Pashupati seal, has led many to speculate about a deity or figure that may have been revered in both cultures. Trade is another avenue that might have facilitated this cultural exchange. The Indus Valley people were known traders, their goods reaching far off lands, including Suma. It's entirely possible that during these exchanges, more than just commodities were shared. Stories, myths and religious beliefs could have traveled alongside material goods, while definitive conclusions remain elusive, the parallels between the two civilizations provide a tantalizing puzzle. Did the Indus Valley inhabitants have their own interpretation or version of the Anunnaki, or are these similarities mere coincidences born from the universal human penchant for creating myths? The sands of time continue to obscure these secrets, but the pursuit of answers persists, reminding us of the interconnected tapestry of ancient human civilizations. The connection between the Anunnaki and ancient Egypt is a topic of fervent debate, exploration and wonder. While Mesopotamia is often cited as the primary region of influence for the Anunnaki according to various theories, their reach possibly extended far beyond, touching the banks of the Nile and influencing the dynasties that rose there. At the heart of ancient Egypt was its pantheon of gods and goddesses, revered and depicted in magnificent temples, hieroglyphs and papyrus scrolls. Names like Osiris, Isis, Ra and Anubis are well known, but some researchers suggest that these deities could share a lineage or be synonymous with the Anunnaki. One of the compelling arguments stems from the intricate and advanced architectural feats of the Egyptians. The pyramids, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, remain a marvel. Their precise alignments with celestial bodies, intricate internal chambers and sheer grandiosity are sometimes cited as being beyond the capabilities of ancient man without some external guidance. Could it be that the Anunnaki, with their advanced knowledge, had a hand in this? Then there are the similarities in stories and legends. Just as the Anunnaki were believed to have imparted vast knowledge in Mesopotamia, so too were the gods of Egypt considered the source of wisdom, medicine, astronomy and more. The Book of the Dead, a guide to the afterlife for ancient Egyptians, contains spells and instructions that resonate with tales from Sumerian texts. Themes of life, death, resurrection and the stars repeatedly appear in both cultures. However, it's the similarities between the physical depictions of the gods where things become even more intriguing. Both Sumerian and Egyptian art represent their deities as larger than life often possessing unique crowns or headdresses and holding staffs or scepters of power. Some speculate that these could be more than just symbols, but might represent some form of advanced technology or device. Moreover, the idea of kingship, granted from the heavens, is a common thread. Pharaohs were seen not just as rulers but as gods in human form, a direct bridge between the mortal realm and the divine. 
This concept aligns with the Sumerian belief of kingship being bestowed by the Anunnaki. However, with these points made, it's essential to tread with caution. Correlation does not necessarily imply causation. While there are parallels, there are also vast differences in the beliefs, practices and histories of the Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations. Many scholars believe that these similarities might be coincidental or stem from the shared human experience rather than direct influence. Situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in what's modern-day Iraq, the Sumerians established one of the world's first urban civilizations. Their impact on the course of human history is profound, laying the groundwork for many facets of modern society. In the annals of ancient history, Sumer is often referred to as the cradle of civilization. By 4000 BCE, the Sumerians had already developed systems of writing, advanced architecture, and complex religious beliefs. Their society was a collection of city-states, each governed by its king and protected by its patron god or goddess. Some of the most famous city-states include Ur, Uruk, and Eridu. One of the Sumerians' most celebrated achievements is their system of writing called cuneiform. Etched onto clay tablets, cuneiform symbols allowed them to maintain records, draft laws, and create poetic works of literature. Among these, the Epic of Gilgamesh stands out an epic poem that predates even Homer's works and delves deep into themes of friendship, ambition and the human quest for immortality. Religion was central to Sumerian life. They believed in a pantheon of gods and goddesses who controlled every aspect of their world, from the movements of the stars to the fertility of the soil. Temples known as ziggurats towered over their cities. These were not just places of worship, but centers of economic and administrative activity. Economically, the Sumerians were pioneers in trade and agriculture. Their land, often termed the Fertile Crescent, was immensely fruitful, allowing them to cultivate a range of crops. Yet, what truly propelled their economy was their ingenuity. The Sumerians were among the first to use the wheel, not for transportation initially, but for pottery. They also devised systems of weights and measures, facilitating trade within and beyond their borders. But life in Sumer wasn't always peaceful. Conflicts often arose between city-states vying for resources, leading to the establishment of fortified walls and the rise of warrior kings. The ebb and flow of power, as one city rose while another declined, became a hallmark of Sumerian politics. Over time, as with all ancient civilizations, the Sumerians faced decline. They were absorbed or conquered by subsequent empires, including the Akkadians, Babylonians and Assyrians. However, the imprint they left is undeniable. Their innovations in governance, writing, religion and technology set the stage for successive civilizations and in many ways shaped the trajectory of human progress. Zechariah Sitchin, a controversial and influential figure in the realm of ancient astronaut theories, left behind a legacy that continues to captivate and challenge scholars and enthusiasts alike. His interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts and their potential links to extraterrestrial beings, particularly the Anunnaki, have fueled debates and discussions across the world. Born in Azerbaijan and raised in Palestine, Sitchin's multilingual skills played a pivotal role in his explorations. Fluent in modern and ancient languages, he meticulously deciphered ancient cuneiform texts, the wedge-shaped script used by the Sumerians. Through this deep dive, Sitchin proposed some intriguing and groundbreaking ideas. Central to his theories is the belief that the Anunnaki, a pantheon of deities described in ancient Mesopotamian literature, were not mere myths. Instead, he proposed that they were extraterrestrial beings from a planet named Nibiru, which orbits our sun every 3,600 years. According to Sitchin, these beings came to Earth seeking gold, a resource they required to save the deteriorating atmosphere of their home planet. Sitchin's interpretation of the texts paints a vivid picture of these visitors. He describes how the Anunnaki, upon arriving on Earth, genetically modified native hominins to create a labor force, resulting in the emergence of modern humans. This audacious claim suggests that our very evolution might have been influenced or even orchestrated by these celestial beings. But Sitchin didn't stop there. He posited that much of human civilization's early advancements from the birth of agriculture to the establishment of organized societies were guided by the Anunnaki. They played the role of teachers, imparting knowledge that accelerated human progress at an unprecedented rate. 
Another fascinating angle Sitchin explored was the potential correlations between the Anunnaki tales and stories from other cultures. He drew parallels between Sumerian accounts and those in ancient scriptures like the Hebrew Bible. The story of the Great Flood, for example, appears both in Sumerian texts and in the biblical account of Noah. Was it mere coincidence or evidence of shared experiences with these celestial beings? Though his theories have been met with skepticism from mainstream archaeologists and linguists who often argue that his translations are misinterpretations, there's no denying the influence Sitchin has had. His work has spawned a plethora of books, documentaries and discussions, bridging the gap between ancient legends and the possibility of extraterrestrial encounters. In the end, whether one subscribes to Sitchin's views or dismisses them, his perspective offers an enchanting lens through which to view our ancient past, prompting us to question and explore the boundaries between myth, history, and the vast expanse of the cosmos. Have you ever wondered about the mysteries of our ancient past? Today, we're diving into the world of the Anunnaki, a group of deities from ancient Mesopotamian culture. But what if there's more to these mythical beings than meets the eye? Some theorists believe the Anunnaki were actually advanced extraterrestrial visitors from a hidden planet called Nibiru, who came to Earth seeking gold. This theory suggests that these celestial beings didn't just mine resources, but also left an indelible mark on human civilization, teaching us about agriculture, architecture, and even the stars themselves. From the perplexing structures of Gobekli Tepe to the intricate Sumerian king list, we're going to explore the clues and theories surrounding the Anunnaki's influence and their potential ongoing presence on Earth. So let's delve into this cosmic puzzle and unravel the mysteries of an ancient time. Delving into the realms of ancient mythology and modern extraterrestrial speculation brings us to the intriguing and controversial Anunnaki gold theory. Central to this theory is the belief in an ancient alien race known as the Anunnaki, originating from a hidden planet in our solar system, often referred to as Nibiru or Planet X. This mysterious planet, posited to be on an elongated orbit far beyond Neptune, is said to swing close to Earth every few thousand years. The legend of the Anunnaki first emerged from the ancient Sumerian civilization, one of the earliest known civilizations located in the southern part of Mesopotamia. Sumerian texts and cylinder seals depict beings that some believe to be these ancient astronauts, describing them as those who from heaven to earth came. According to Zechariah Sitchin, a proponent of the theory, the Anunnaki came to earth approximately 450,000 years ago, during one such close passage of Nibiru, their purpose, to mine gold. But why gold? Proponents of the theory suggest that the Anunnaki required gold to repair the deteriorating atmosphere of their home planet. Gold, with its unique properties and ability to reflect infrared light, was supposedly used to create a protective shield in the upper layers of Nibiru's atmosphere. Earth, abundant in this precious metal, thus became their source. The gold theory is further bolstered by interpretations of ancient Sumerian artwork and iconography. Some of these interpretations point to depictions of what could be interpreted as advanced technology, spacecraft or astronauts, possibly the Anunnaki themselves. These interpretations often draw parallels between the Sumerian descriptions of the Anunnaki and similar beings in other ancient cultures and mythologies around the world, suggesting a global presence of these beings. One of the most striking aspects of this theory is the claim that the Anunnaki genetically engineered human beings. It is posited that they used their advanced knowledge to manipulate the existing hominids on Earth, possibly using their own genetic material to create a labor force for mining operations. This, the theory suggests, could explain the sudden leap in human advancement and the emergence of more sophisticated civilizations shortly after. Sitchin and others have pointed to various ancient structures and artifacts as potential evidence of this advanced alien influence, 
such as the precise construction of the Egyptian pyramids or the intricate stone structures of Sumer itself. However, mainstream science and archaeology have widely dismissed these theories, attributing these achievements to human ingenuity and the gradual development of civilization. The Anunnaki gold theory and the associated legends of planet Nibiru continue to captivate the imagination of many. They stand as a testament to humanity's enduring fascination with the stars and the possibilities of what might lie beyond our current understanding. Whether viewed as ancient myth or as speculative history, these stories challenge us to consider the vast and mysterious tapestry of the universe in which we reside. At the heart of some of the most intriguing theories about ancient civilizations lies the story of the Anunnaki, a group of deities in Sumerian mythology who are often at the center of alternative historical narratives. According to these theories, the Anunnaki were not merely mythological beings, but visitors from another world who played a pivotal role in shaping human civilization. Looking at the ancient Sumerian civilization, it's evident that they were remarkably advanced for their time. They built impressive cities like Uruk and Ur, developed a sophisticated system of writing, cuneiform, and made significant advancements in mathematics and astronomy. Some theorists argue that such advancements are too sophisticated to have originated independently, suggesting extraterrestrial influence. One of the most fascinating aspects of this theory is the claim that the Anunnaki directly intervened in human evolution. It is hypothesized that they used their advanced technology and knowledge in genetics to upgrade Homo sapiens, merging their extraterrestrial DNA with that of humans. This, the theory posits, could explain the sudden leap in human intelligence and capabilities around this period. Artifacts such as the Sumerian King List, which records the reigns of kings over thousands of years, and the detailed astronomical records found in Sumerian texts are often cited as evidence of this alien influence. These records show an understanding of celestial bodies and their movements that seems too advanced for a civilization of that era. Moreover, the depiction of the Anunnaki in Sumerian art, often shown as larger than human figures and sometimes with non-human features, fuels speculation about their extraterrestrial origin. These depictions are interpreted by some as literal representations of these beings, rather than symbolic or mythological figures. In modern culture, the story of the Anunnaki has taken on a life of its own, inspiring books, movies and conspiracy theories. It continues to be a topic of fascination and debate, symbolizing the enduring human quest to understand our origins and the development of our civilizations. Whether one views the Anunnaki as myth or as possible historical figures, their story invites us to consider broader possibilities about our past and the ancient world. The quest to trace the footprints of the Anunnaki across our planet takes us to various historical and archaeological sites where clues of their supposed involvement with human civilizations are said to be present. Proponents of the theory scrutinize these sites, searching for evidence of extraterrestrial interaction and knowledge sharing with ancient humans. One focal point in this quest is the ancient Sumerian civilization. The Sumerian astronomical texts, for instance, display a sophisticated understanding of planetary movements, leading some to speculate that this knowledge was imparted by the Anunnaki. The ziggurats, towering temple complexes of ancient Mesopotamia, with their intricate and monumental design, also fuel theories of extraterrestrial architectural influence. Beyond Mesopotamia, other ancient sites around the world are speculated to bear the mark of the Anunnaki. The Egyptian pyramids, with their precise alignment and construction, are often mentioned in this context. Theories suggest that the knowledge and technology required to build these colossal structures might have been shared by the Anunnaki. Similarly, the megalithic structures of Stonehenge in England, with their complex arrangement and astrological significance, are sometimes included in discussions about potential Anunnaki involvement. In terms of their ongoing presence, some theorists believe that the Anunnaki never left Earth and continue to influence world events. This belief is often tied to conspiracy theories about hidden powers controlling global affairs, suggesting that the Anunnaki or their descendants might be involved in guiding the course of human history from behind the scenes. These theories delve into the realm of speculation, 
with claims ranging from secret societies with Anunnaki knowledge to alien-human hybrids influencing political and economic systems. Artifacts and art from various ancient cultures also come under scrutiny for alleged depictions of the Anunnaki. These include Sumerian statues and reliefs, Egyptian hieroglyphs, and even pre-Columbian art from the Americas. Proponents analyze these artifacts for iconography and symbolism that could indicate extraterrestrial contact or influence, such as depictions of beings with non-human features or objects that resemble modern perceptions of spacecraft. The narrative of the Anunnaki is deeply intertwined with the broader framework of the ancient astronaut theory, a perspective suggesting that extraterrestrial beings visited Earth in antiquity and significantly influenced the development of human civilization. This theory posits that many of the mythological tales, religious texts and ancient artworks that have been passed down through generations are not mere products of human imagination, but actual accounts of alien visitation. Central to this theory is the interpretation of ancient texts and artifacts. For instance, the Anunnaki, as described in Sumerian mythology, are often depicted as godlike figures coming from the sky which some theorists argue could be a literal description of extraterrestrial visitors. Critics argue that such interpretations often involve a significant amount of speculation and tend to overlook cultural and mythological contexts. They caution against projecting modern UFO and alien concepts onto ancient civilizations, which had their own rich and complex understandings of the world. On the other hand, Supporters of the ancient astronaut theory argue that mainstream historical and archaeological interpretations fail to adequately explain certain anomalies in ancient artifacts and texts. This theory has permeated popular culture, inspiring a plethora of media. It has captivated the imagination of millions, leading to a popular reimagining of human history. This fascination reflects a broader human interest in understanding our origins and the possibility of connections to other worlds or civilizations. The Anunnaki and the ancient astronaut theory represent a compelling narrative that challenges conventional views of human history. Whether one sees them as mere myths or potential historical realities, they undoubtedly enrich the tapestry of human culture with their mystery and provoke us to question our understanding of the past. Welcome to our journey through history as we explore the fascinating story of the Babylonian Empire and its connections to the Anunnaki, a group of powerful deities in ancient Mesopotamian mythology. The Babylonian Empire was one of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, known for its monumental architecture, scientific achievements, and influential legal code. But before we delve into the incredible accomplishments of this empire, let's start by exploring the Anunnaki's role in shaping the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Mesopotamia. Hello and welcome to Life's Biggest Questions. Now that's been said, let's continue. The Anunnaki were a group of gods and goddesses worshipped by the various cultures of ancient Mesopotamia, including the Sumerians, Akkadians and Babylonians. As a descendants of the Akkadians, the Babylonians inherited many aspects of their predecessors' religious beliefs, including the veneration of the Anunnaki. These deities played a significant role in the lives of the Babylonians, who believed that the gods controlled the forces of nature and the fate of humanity. The Anunnaki were invoked in prayers, rituals and religious texts, and their stories were passed down through generations in the form of myths and legends. And now, with the foundation of the Anunnaki's influence in mind, let's explore the rise, achievements and eventual fall of the Babylonian Empire. The rise of the Babylonian Empire can be traced back to the early 2nd millennium BCE, during a time of great political upheaval in Mesopotamia. The region was divided into several city-states, each ruled by its own king, and conflicts between these city-states were common. It was in this turbulent environment that the Babylonian Empire began to take shape. The city of Babylon itself was founded around 1894 BCE by the Amorite king Sumu Abum. However, it was under the rule of Hammurabi, reigned 1792 to 1750 BCE, the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty, that the empire truly began to emerge as a major power in the region. Hammurabi was an ambitious ruler who sought to expand his kingdom's influence and territory. Through a combination of diplomatic alliances, strategic marriages and military conquests, he managed to bring the majority of Mesopotamia under Babylonian control. 
One of Hammurabi's most notable military achievements was the conquest of the rival city-state of Larsa, which gave him control over the economically important trade routes along the Euphrates River. He also conquered other neighboring city-states such as Ashnuna, Mari, and Elam, further expanding his empire's reach. During his reign, Hammurabi not only focused on military expansion, but also on the internal development and administration of his kingdom. He implemented a series of reforms aimed at improving the lives of his subjects, such as the construction of irrigation canals to enhance agricultural production and the establishment of a centralized bureaucracy to govern the empire more efficiently. Hammurabi is perhaps best known for his legal code, the Code of Hammurabi, which was a comprehensive set of laws covering various aspects of daily life, such as trade, property rights and family law. This code, inscribed on a stone stele, is considered one of the earliest and most complete legal codes in human history and provides a valuable insight into the society, values and governance of the Babylonian Empire. After Hammurabi's death, his successors continued to expand and consolidate the empire's power, even as it faced various challenges from both internal and external forces. Over the centuries, the Babylonian Empire would experience periods of decline and resurgence, marked by the rise and fall of different dynasties and rulers. The Babylonian Empire, which thrived during the 2nd and 1st millennia BCE, left a significant legacy through its numerous achievements. These accomplishments spanned various fields, including architecture, science, mathematics, literature and law. Here are some of the most notable Babylonian achievements. Architecture. Babylon was known for its grandiose architecture, including the city walls, the Ishtar Gate, the Etamenanki, a massive ziggurat temple, and the fabled Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The Hanging Gardens, considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, were a series of terraces filled with exotic plants and trees, supported by complex irrigation systems. Babylonian astronomers made substantial advancements in the field of astronomy. They meticulously observed and documented celestial phenomena, leading to the development of the first known system for predicting the future positions of planets. The Babylonians also created the lunar calendar, which divided the year into 12 months based on the cycles of the moon. Mathematics The Babylonians pioneered the base 60 numeral system, which is still used today in our measurements of time, minutes and seconds, and angles, degrees, minutes and seconds. This advanced mathematical system allowed the Babylonians to perform complex calculations required for engineering projects, solve various practical problems, and even calculate the square root and cube root of numbers. The Babylonians used the cuneiform script, a system of writing that used wedge-shaped marks made on clay tablets. They made significant contributions to literature, producing works such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the world's oldest known works of literature. Babylonian scribes also created extensive libraries, which housed vast collections of religious, historical and scientific texts. The Code of Hammurabi Under the rule of King Hammurabi, the Babylonians established one of the earliest known legal codes. The Code of Hammurabi, inscribed on a large stone stele, covered a wide range of civil and criminal matters. It provided a detailed account of the social structure, values and legal rights of the people living in the Babylonian Empire. Medicine Babylonian physicians were skilled in diagnosing and treating various ailments. They used a combination of empirical observations, medical texts and incantations to treat their patients. While their understanding of the human body was limited by today's standards, the Babylonians made significant contributions to the development of medical knowledge. The Babylonian Empire was a center of trade and commerce in the ancient world, benefiting from its strategic location along the Euphrates River. Babylonian merchants traded with other civilizations in the region, exchanging goods such as textiles, grains, metals and spices. These achievements showcase the ingenuity and creativity of the Babylonian people, who left a lasting impact on the fields of science, art and culture. The legacy of the Babylonian Empire continues to influence our modern world, as we build upon the foundations laid by this ancient civilization. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were a result of a combination of internal and external factors that weakened the empire over time, ultimately leading to its collapse. 
After the death of Nebuchadnezzar II in 562 BCE, the Babylonian Empire experienced a period of political instability marked by a series of weak and ineffective rulers. This instability weakened the empire's ability to govern its vast territories effectively and left it vulnerable to external threats. Economic Decline The Babylonian Empire's economy relied heavily on agriculture and trade. However, as the empire expanded, it faced challenges in maintaining its vast irrigation systems, leading to decreased agricultural productivity. Uh, additionally, competition from other regional powers disrupted trade routes, further weakening the economy. The expansion of the Babylonian Empire brought with it the incorporation of diverse ethnic groups and cultures. As the empire declined, tensions between these groups began to rise, leading to social unrest and weakening the unity of the empire. Rise of the Persians The rise of the Persian Empire under Cyrus the Great presented a significant external threat to the Babylonian Empire. The Persians were a powerful and ambitious force, and they began to expand their territories at the expense of the Babylonians. Fall of Babylon to the Persians in 539 BCE, the Persian army led by Cyrus the Great marched on the city of Babylon. The Babylonians, weakened by internal strife and economic decline, were unable to mount a strong defense against the invading forces. The Persian army entered the city without much resistance, marking the end of the Babylonian Empire. After the conquest, Cyrus the Great incorporated the Babylonian territories into his expanding Persian Empire and treated the conquered people with relative tolerance and respect. Hellenistic period The conquest of the Persian Empire by Alexander the Great in 331 BCE marked the beginning of the Hellenistic period in Mesopotamia. The region was subsequently absorbed into the Seleucid Empire, one of the successor states of Alexander's empire, which led to the gradual decline of Babylonian culture and influence. The rise of the Parthian and Sassanid empires further diminished the remnants of Babylonian culture in the region. These empires, which controlled Mesopotamia at different points in time, introduced new cultural, religious and political influences that would come to dominate the region, leading to the eventual disappearance of the distinct Babylonian identity. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were due to a combination of internal factors, such as political instability, economic decline and social unrest, as well as external pressures, such as the rise of powerful neighboring empires. The fall of Babylon to the Persians marked the end of the Babylonian Empire, and subsequent conquests and cultural shifts in the region led to the gradual disappearance of Babylonian culture and influence. The Babylonians, like other Mesopotamian civilizations such as the Sumerians and Akkadians, believed in a variety of gods that included the Anunnaki. The lasting legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in several aspects. Mythology and religion. The Anunnaki played a central role in Mesopotamian religious beliefs, shaping the spiritual lives of the Babylonians and influencing their worldview. Many of the gods in the Babylonian pantheon, such as Marduk, Enlil, and Ea, were associated with the Anunnaki. These gods were believed to have immense power over the natural world, and their influence can still be seen in the religious and mythological texts that have survived to this day. Creation of Mankind According to ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki created human beings to serve as their laborers. The creation of humanity by the gods is a common theme in many ancient cultures, and the Anunnaki's role in this process has left a lasting impression on the cultural memory of the region. The mythology and religious beliefs of the Babylonian Empire, including the stories of the Anunnaki, influenced later civilizations in the region, such as the Assyrians, and even spread to other parts of the ancient world. For example, some of the stories from Mesopotamian mythology, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, have parallels in the Bible and other ancient texts. Art and Architecture The Anunnaki were often depicted in Babylonian art, including statues, reliefs and frescoes. These artistic representations of the gods reflect the importance of the Anunnaki in Babylonian society and provide a glimpse into the religious beliefs and practices of the time. The Anunnaki have captured the imagination of modern researchers and writers, leading to various interpretations and theories about their role in human history. Some suggest that the Anunnaki were actually extraterrestrial beings who visited Earth in ancient times. 
while others see them as symbolic representations of natural forces or aspects of human consciousness. These modern theories, while speculative, demonstrate the enduring fascination with the Anunnaki and their potential influence on human civilization. The legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in various aspects of culture, religion, art and even modern theories about the origins of humanity. As a central element of Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki continue to capture the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike, demonstrating the impact of ancient Babylonian beliefs and achievements on our understanding of human history. In the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, the Assyrians emerged as a powerful and highly advanced civilization, forging an empire that would leave a lasting impact on the history of the region. Their prowess in warfare, innovative architectural feats and intricate artistic expressions were just a few of the hallmarks of this Iron Age society. Intriguingly, the Assyrians shared a deep connection with the Anunnaki, a group of deities revered throughout ancient Mesopotamian cultures. This divine relationship not only shaped their religious beliefs and practices, but also influenced their political structure, art and literature leaving a fascinating and complex legacy for future generations to uncover. Hello and welcome to life's biggest questions. Let's continue this journey, shall we? The Assyrian Empire had its roots in the city-state of Asher, located on the banks of the Tigris River in modern-day northern Iraq. The city was named after the chief deity of the Assyrian pantheon, Asher, who was believed to grant the Assyrian kings their divine mandate to rule. By the late 3rd millennium BCE, Asher had grown into a significant trading hub, benefiting from its strategic location along the Tigris River and its role in the lucrative trade network that connected Mesopotamia with Anatolia and the Mediterranean world. During the 2nd millennium BCE, Asher and its surrounding region came under the control of various Mesopotamian powers, such as the 3rd dynasty of Ur and the old Babylonian Empire. However, by the 14th century BCE, the Assyrians had managed to reassert their independence and expand their influence under the rule of King Asher Ubalit. Asher Ubalit uh, first is credited with founding the Middle Assyrian Empire and embarking on an aggressive campaign of conquest, which saw the annexation of neighboring territories and the establishment of a pattern of military expansion that would define the Assyrian Empire for centuries to come. The Assyrian Empire continued to grow and consolidate its power under a series of strong and ambitious rulers, including Adad-Nirari I, Tukulti Ninurta I, and Tiglath Pilsa I. These kings implemented administrative reforms to centralize power and enhance their control over the expanding empire. They also invested heavily in infrastructure projects such as irrigation systems and road networks, which facilitated the movement of goods and people and enabled the efficient administration of the empire's vast territories. The zenith of Assyrian power came during the Neo-Assyrian period, which began in the late 10th century BCE with the reign of Adad-Nirari II. This period saw a rapid expansion of the empire under rulers like Ashurnasirpal II, Shalmaneser III, Tiglath-Pilsa III, Sargon II, Sennacherib, Esarhaddon and Ashurbanipal. At its peak, the Assyrian Empire stretched from the Persian Gulf in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west and from the borders of modern-day Iran in the north to Egypt in the south. Throughout their history, the Assyrians maintained an aggressive policy of expansion and conquest, often employing brutal tactics to subdue their enemies and maintain control over their vast territories. This policy allowed them to amass significant wealth and resources, which in turn fueled their continued growth and dominance in the ancient Near East. The Assyrian military was a key factor in the empire's rise to prominence and the backbone of its success. Its strength lay in its discipline, organization, advanced weaponry and innovative strategies. The following elements contributed to the Assyrians' fearsome reputation on the battlefield. The Assyrians were among the first to use iron extensively in their weapons, giving them a significant advantage over their enemies. Iron was stronger and more durable than bronze, allowing the Assyrians to produce superior swords, spears and arrowheads. This technological edge enabled them to overcome adversaries who were still reliant on bronze weaponry. The Assyrian army was highly organized, with a clear chain of command and specialized units, including infantry, cavalry, archers and charioteers. This organization allowed for efficient communication and coordination on the battlefield ensuring that the Assyrians could effectively execute complex tactics and maneuvers. 
the Assyrians were masters of siege warfare, employing innovative techniques and technologies to breach fortified cities. They utilized siege towers, battering rams and sappers to undermine city walls. The Assyrians also employed psychological warfare, such as displaying the severed heads of captured enemy leaders to demoralize their opponents and hasten their surrender. Unlike many of their contemporaries, the Assyrians maintained a large professional standing army that was always ready for battle. This enabled them to respond rapidly to threats and to project their power across the vast expanse of their empire. The Assyrian military made extensive use of cavalry and chariots, which allowed them to exploit the mobility and speed of these units to their advantage on the battlefield. Assyrian cavalry and charioteers were renowned for their skill and ferocity, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. The Assyrians developed efficient logistical systems to keep their armies supplied on campaign. They built roads and bridges to facilitate the movement of troops and supplies, and they established supply depots and granaries in strategic locations to ensure that their forces were always well provisioned. Assyrian soldiers were rigorously trained from a young age, instilling in them a strong sense of discipline and loyalty to the empire. This training, combined with their advanced weaponry and tactics, made the Assyrian army a formidable force on the battlefield. The Assyrian military was not only the foundation of the empire's success, but also an instrument of terror, used to suppress revolts and intimidate potential adversaries. The Assyrians' military prowess and innovations played a critical role in their rise to power and their ability to maintain control over their vast territories. The Assyrian Empire, once a dominant power in the ancient Near East, eventually succumbed to a combination of internal and external factors that led to its decline and fall. The following factors contributed to the disintegration of this once mighty empire. Overextension and revolts, as the Assyrian Empire expanded, it became increasingly difficult to maintain control over its vast territories. Rebellions and uprisings were common, particularly in the more distant provinces. The Assyrians relied heavily on their fearsome military to suppress these revolts, but this strategy stretched their resources thin and left the empire vulnerable to external threats. The cost of maintaining a large standing army, as well as the construction of grand palaces, temples and other monumental structures, placed a significant financial burden on the empire. This burden was further exacerbated by the need to fund expensive military campaigns to suppress revolts and defend the empire's borders. This financial strain weakened the Assyrian economy and made it more susceptible to external shocks, internal strife and political instability. Succession disputes and infighting among the Assyrian elite led to periods of political instability and weakened the central authority of the empire. This instability made it more difficult for the Assyrians to respond effectively to external threats and to maintain control over their territories. Environmental factors. Some scholars argue that environmental factors, such as droughts and famines, contributed to the decline of the Assyrian empire. These natural disasters would have strained the empire's already weakened economy and disrupted its agricultural base, further exacerbating the challenges faced by the Assyrians. The Assyrian Empire faced increasing pressure from external powers, such as the Medes, Babylonians and Scythians. As the Assyrians struggled to maintain control over their territories and suppress internal revolts, these external powers sensed an opportunity to challenge Assyrian dominance. In 612 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes formed a coalition and laid siege to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh, ultimately capturing the city and dealing a devastating blow to the Assyrian Empire. The final collapse. After the fall of Nineveh, the Assyrians attempted to regroup and establish a new capital at Haran. However, the empire was too weakened to withstand the continued onslaught from its enemies. In 609 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes captured Haran, marking the end of the Assyrian Empire as a political and military power. The decline and fall of the Assyrian Empire were the result of a complex interplay of internal and external factors. The Empire's overextension, economic strain, political instability and environmental challenges weakened its foundations, while the rise of powerful external adversaries ultimately led to its collapse. The fall of the Assyrian Empire marked the end of an era and paved the way for the rise of new powers in the ancient Near East, such as the Babylonians and the Persians. 
But the Anunnaki, a group of deities in ancient Mesopotamian religions, played a significant role in shaping the beliefs and culture of the Assyrians, who were one of the dominant civilizations of the ancient Near East. The connection between the Assyrians and the Anunnaki can be seen in various aspects of their society, including their religion, art and literature. The Assyrian religion, like that of other Mesopotamian cultures, was deeply influenced by the worship of the Anunnaki. These gods and goddesses were believed to have created humanity and were responsible for the natural world, as well as for human society and its institutions. Key Anunnaki deities such as Enlil, Ea and Anu were central to the Assyrians, and their worship was an essential part of religious life. Assyrian kings claimed to rule by the divine mandate of the Anunnaki, who were believed to have appointed them as their earthly representatives. This divine connection was used to legitimize the rule of the Assyrian kings and to justify their military conquests. Assyrian kings were often depicted in art and literature as receiving the blessing or guidance of the Anunnaki, further reinforcing the idea that their rule was divinely ordained. The influence of the Anunnaki can be seen in the art and iconography of the Assyrian Empire. Depictions of Anunnaki deities are found on Assyrian palace reliefs, sculptures and other artifacts, often alongside images of the Assyrian king. The winged disc, a symbol associated with the sun god Shamash, another member of the Anunnaki, was a common motif in Assyrian art and was often used as a symbol of divine protection and authority. The Anunnaki featured prominently in Assyrian literature and mythology, which was heavily influenced by earlier Sumerian and Akkadian sources. Stories of the Anunnaki, such as the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth, and the Epic of Gilgamesh, were known and revered by the Assyrians, who often incorporated these tales into their own literary works and inscriptions. As we delve into the intriguing world of the Assyrians, we find a civilization marked by exceptional achievements and indelible ties to the ancient Anunnaki deities. Their divine mandate provided a foundation for the Assyrian Empire's rise to prominence, fueling their military conquests and shaping their cultural expressions. Yet despite their numerous accomplishments, the Assyrians ultimately succumbed to a combination of internal and external pressures that led to their empire's decline and fall. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Stay tuned for more exciting developments and let us know future suggestions in the comments down below.